Good. Okay. So this is our last lecture. Sorry we couldn't make it on, on Friday. There was a lot of enthusiastic lecturer that they wanted to give you a lecture. So I have to do it now. Um, so that's that. That is qu quite an entertaining lecture because after all you learned in crypto, now now this lecture tells you what kind of a hurdles you are going to to uh, face in in practice. Um, so we here we are going to talk about mainly two things: uh, keeping the secret secrets and usability. So um, which is also touches on basically how. To, Usability make it hard to, to keep secret secrets. So what is a secret in cryptography? Um, basically, it's any data that you know that nobody else knows. And you don't want anybody else to know. Uh, and so how does this work? So when you have a secret, um, the only thing that other people should see is the output of some operation. So you have some operation you do on your secret. And the only thing that should come out is the output of that operation. Uh, and whatever happened inside that operation should not be open to the, to the public. So for example, you get a, a secret, and then you hash it. But after the hash comes out, you can tell the hash to other people. But the, the process of hashing it is private. Or you get a private key, you apply a function, you generate the public key according to it, and then you publish the private key but you don't want to reveal the private key itself. Uh, and then, or use a private key to sign. So the signature signing is a process and then you reveal the signature. So this, the, the operation itself, it should stay opaque. Um, so how, do, how does this secret uh, getting leaked now in this, uh, using this, the, this, this model? Um, so, it could leak some information while you're normally you doing this operation because actually you're using the secret because you need to do mathematical operation on it. Um, or like you get hacked or somebody come and stole your key or something like that. So um, two considerations. So let's go um, talk about uh, the operational side of it. So one of the, one of the very, very common problem pe people have is the, is, the, is the bad randomness algorithm. Um, so as, if, if your randomness is compromised, if, if, if the adversary knows how you are generating the random because it's pseudo-random and you don't have enough uh, entropy, or the adversary, you, or you use the bad randomness algorithm, then no matter how good is your, your, your cryptographic algorithm, you your 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 key they they can try to guess your key and they compromise it um there are multiple examples of this but there was one study that went and checked all the public key of routers in the on the internet and then they easily were able they were rsa and they easily were able to factorize them and the reason was the router just turns on and then generate the key and by all of them were doing basically the same thing, they didn't have enough randomness. So they would end up with the same prime. All of them were like, they were using similar prime because there was not enough randomness. When you, on your laptop, you browse, you do stuff, your randomness will go up. But when you turn on the router, it doesn't interact with the user, it doesn't have a lot of intrinsic randomness. Um, um, the other ones are side channel attacks. So side channel attacks are attacks that, uh, they don't attack the cryptography algorithm. They don't attack the math. They say, OK, the math seems hard. We are not going to attack the math. But we are going to attack the implementation, the device, the information that leaks just because the, the, the operation are happening on a physical device. Um, there are many types of them. But the timing attacks are, are the most common ones. So uh, timing attack, it wants to, to use um, the, the date, the, the information you get from the duration of the running of an algorithm to break it. It was one of the, one of the assignments in the dev track. So um, for example, they see, oh, based on the secret, some instructions are executed and some other aren't. So based on that, they would they would guess um, what, what is the secret. Or there is an if statement in the, in the 
in the implementation. One of the good things about the ZK circuits, they don't have if. So when you design ZK circuit, it gives you some idea how to write a crypto code because the moment you put the if a statement, then they can abuse it and see if it goes that way or that way. And then from the timing, because if one way is slower than the other way, then they can abuse it to, to find out your secret. And there's a question? No, there's no question. Um, and if uh, the other one is a memory access pattern, so if, if you, based on your secret, you go and check different part of the memory. And then from that, they know that's what are you doing. So uh, here is an example. It's basically what was on the assignment. Um, is this a secure code? Anybody? No, okay, maybe Mike here? Mike, Mike at the front. One, two, three is coming. Why? Yeah. Okay. Thank uh, you. Yeah, it's working on. Uh, it's not because there's a quick uh, check before the actual password gets verified, which can tell you if the length is uh, wrong instantly. And uh, usually the code will run longer. And if it runs longer, it means that you actually got the right, uh, uh, you got past the first checkpoint, let's say. Sure. So yeah, that's, that's it. So here I'm checking the length. And if the length fails, then you don't even touch this code. So they, they don't know the password, but they can submit a love password and see when it stops faster. That was part of the assignment. What if I do it like this? Is this secure? Mike, Mike. Depends on the underlying implementation for checking comparison. It's probably not safe, no? Because checking, cost, checking uh, in, in, in the programming language is designed to be fast. And they don't want to, to waste time just to make the timing equal. So you cannot really, really trust this. OK, so suppose. Um, we enforce the length, okay? So it's only, it only fails here if we didn't enforce the range. Suppose we padded it before calling this function. Is this safe? So you see what I did here, no? I, I'm using mem, mem CMP is, is some kind of operating, uh, it, it calls the, opera, the, the operating system mem comparison. It takes two, two, two block of memory and compare them. So suppose this, suppose all the passwords have the same length, so this won't fail. Mm -hmm. Is this line safe? Anybody? So, oh, you have, okay, Mike, sorry. I would say it's not safe because it depends on an other library and you don't know what it does. So better to use something that you implemented yourself in this case. It could also theoretically change in the future what's, how it's implemented. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, so we can actually check what this library is doing, you know? That is one good thing about Linux manual page. So if you take man, man <clears throat> for mem CMP, it says do not use to compare security critical data, such as cryptographic secrets, because it requires CPU time depends on the number of equal bytes. And instead use another function that is constant time, and then it gives an example. In NetBSD there is such a function, but there is no standard function uh, in general. So it called constant time equal. Probably that one will be safe, but still, they, they might change the implementation later and won't be, but probably it will stay safe. But you see, you cannot use it on all Linux, so it's not safe. Um, so this is, this is how we're making it safe. If, 
if you are interested. So, so here, but, but we, without, before you have to check that the length, like, don't allow, make their length the same, pad it before you send it here. But here then, <clears throat> you will see. Um, here. So it will check all the bytes till the end and just keep track. And if one of them fail, then the check will fail at the end. But it will go over all the bytes. It doesn't. Um, um, it doesn't jump out. Go ahead. So I, I, let's do one, one question per slide so we don't go over time. OK, uh, quickly. What if we like this? Cool, good. Uh, what if another option would be maybe to like add some jitter, like uh, noise randomization to the timing of it, and then? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is another another solution, but okay. it's more, much much more complicated to implement. And then your randomness should be good. Your noise boost should be like normal. I don't know. You want to be uniform. I mean, assuming there's like a source of a random uh, scene somewhere, like weather or whatever. But if it's yeah. uniform, you know, you do it many times. It average, <clears throat> and it's average. Oh. And then the attacker might be able to reduce the, the deduct the noise from it. Okay. Is, is doable, but it's more complicated. So um, the morale of the story is that this is hard. We shouldn't uh, try to implement yourself. <clears throat> so there are a few lines from the implementation of ED25519. For example, it says we put something here. So your new uh, <clears throat> determin so the, the signature are deterministic. So randomness doesn't break them. Problem with randomness. If your hash function is bad, we put something. So if, the if your hash function has collision, still the signature stays secure. Uh, <clears throat> it says something here. It says it doesn't uh, touch a different part of memory based on your secret. And it says it doesn't have any branch. So it's just uh, don't go and implement ED25519 signature because it's not easy. So that is the morale of the story. Um, Preventing side channel attack is very hard, and you will, you know, mess it up, and then, and then, you know, your project will fall apart. So, so you shouldn't really implement your trend, your crypto. If you came up with something very new that there nobody has implemented yet, then maybe you have to talk with a lot of experts about how to implement it. Um, so we decided not to implement our crypto. We are going to choose a library that does it for us. Then even in that, you have to have consideration. First of all, always stay about abstraction layer that they, they offer. They give you API, they say, give me a random, I will give you private key. Give me this, I give you this. Don't try to like, oh, how can I, the, how can I take the, this, like, Maybe it breaks a secret key inside to two secret key to do some operation. Don't try to get those secret key out. Just to stay about the abstraction layer. Um, yeah, validate every primitive assumption. So the library says you need to give me a good randomness, then they need actual good randomness. If the library says um, you have to throw the secret key away after one time use, like the scheme we saw in Friday in Dr. Alan, or that when you do one signature, after that you have to throw the bits that you use for that signature out, then you, you can, if you reuse it, then you break the system or the many times pad that we saw the first day. So check the library, check the thing, see, see what, did, what, what they require, you require you for, for, the, for the input. Um, use the most reputable library. Just don't do a Google search and say, okay, ED2419, what can I find? Um, see what library is used most. Three minutes. Okay. I'm almost there. Um, and uh, use the library that is audited, that people have already studied. Yeah, and then see when when the stuff go, go really bad. So don't 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 go play with curve point. Don't don't play with padding a scheme. Any IV twisted curve. Don't don't, don't play with these. Stay about that section. Um. So there are some horror stories. I'm not going over them, but uh, like 
PlayStation 3 keys got compromised or these people had to change their hash function because they, they decided they have a very good hash function and then the moment they <clears throat> it came out in public, it got broken, they had to change it to SHA-3. Or these cell phones that they were using very small 54-bit key and NSA was easily breaking them and listen to everybody's conversation. Stuff like that. So that's that's about the implementation. Then the other thing, uh, let's go fast over it, uh, is physical security. So this is a joke from the this website that people think like they're trying to break this, but no, they come and break your leg and says, "Tell me the the password." Um, so when they get access to your device, usually if it's normal device, they are probably able to get your secret key out of it. With a lot of stuff, they can get the whole storage. Uh, and if, if, if the key is loaded in RAM, they can take the RAM and read it in another device. They can listen to the sound of CPUs and stuff like that. So physical access to your devices probably compromises your, your, your secret. But there are devices that are specifically designed to not leak and be tamper-proof. So the moment you are start trying to touch them, they burn and they stop working. So maybe these are a better device. Uh, you should use these. You should consider using the, the, the device that gives you hardware security um, to store your secret. I'm, I'm there. The other one are very, very fast, OK? Um, so here, the, the, the last thing I'm talking about, how many, um, look, Aaron took two minutes of my time. So I have that two minutes. <laughs> Um, security and usability. So this is this is very fast. So basically, it, the, the idea is here: security and usability has reverse relationship. Um, so what are you going to do if I give you something and I say um, uh, is is, is, is a long secret? And I say if I come back one year from now and nobody had learned the secret, I'll give you one million dollar. What would you do? What? Yeah, exactly. So you destroy it. So that is the highest level. Nobody in the world will know. So if I say after one year, I'm going to give you $1 million, if you, nobody else knows it, and you showed it to me. So probably you hide it somewhere in a bank vault, and you buried it on the ground. And then after one year, you take it out. But the problem is, comes if I say, if you have to show it to me every month once, then you have to dig the ground every month once, and sometimes somebody will cut you, so it becomes harder. And if I ask you for every day, then that's become even harder. So the morale of this story is that generating secrets are very, very easy. So if you need a secret to keep it more secure and you don't use it every day, you use it for transfer of money once a year, don't use that for another thing that you need to use it every day. So generate a lot of secrets and use them for different purpose is better than, than, than uh, start try to saving a, a, a number of secrets that you have. Okay, thank you very much. There is no time for questions.